Okay, so we have talked about priors, a priori probabilities we assign to elementary events, let's say. Next, we will talk about conditional probability. But you see, in a sense, all probability is conditional because even the priors are your assumptions, right? They are your, your assi assignments. Your assignments based on your beliefs or your prior knowledge of the system, like assuming the die is fair or assuming the coin is fair, okay? So even with such prior probabilities, there is a certain conditioning element. You condition that assumption based on your beliefs or uh, instantaneous knowledge, okay? So here's, here's a tweet from uh, uh, an account that is run by uh, John D. Cook, whose um, blog site I have mentioned last week. And you can also follow this if you use Twitter. I recommend this uh, account. It says conditional probability is subtle. All probability is conditional, as we have talked about just now. Therefore, all probability is subtle. If you remember last week, I have pointed out to the blog entry that says probability is subtle. So now here, this is also a generalization, conditional probability is subtle. It's not that straightforward to understand what conditional probability implies, okay? So at this point, we are going to talk about conditional probability, which is an extremely important point, extremely important top, uh, topic in this lecture. Okay, let's start with an easy question. When I throw a fair die, what is the probability that the outcome is three? Right, simple enough. There are six outcomes. I have no prior information to make me think otherwise than that they are all equal probable. Therefore, I'm going to assume probability of outcome three, sorry, is one over six, right? You see, this is my assumption. I assign the value one over six to this elementary outcome. This is my prior probability. But if I obtain more information on the outcome, okay, without knowing the outcome, if somebody gives me information on it, my belief of its likelihood might change. For instance, what if I tell you that the outcome is odd? Okay, so for instance, I throw a die and I do not show the outcome to you. And I ask to you, what is the probability that the outcome is three? So you will certainly tell one over six. But then if I tell you the outcome is odd, now this is new information. Okay, and it changes, well, it should change your beliefs on the likelihood of the outcomes. Because now you see the outcomes of two, four, and six are out of the question, right? Now, prior to this, you see, my sample space was one, two, three, four, five, six. And that is the reason I chose the value one over six for this probability. In my sample space, I had six outcomes. But you see, when I tell you the outcome is odd, what is the sample space? Let's say the updated sample space is now one, three, and five, right? It's like, your sample space is here, let's say one here, two here, three, four, five, and six. Now you see this actually is an event. Let's say event O. Event O is outcome is odd. Okay, and in fact, this is equal to one, three, five. When I give you this information, I'm telling you that the event O has occurred, 
okay? And I'm asking you, what is the probability of the outcome being three based on this information? So essentially what I'm, what, what I'm telling you is, what is the probability of three given the outcome is odd? Now, essentially, you are restricting your outcomes to this event here, okay? So this now is your updated sample space, okay? So you should apply the same principle here. Now your sample space is a smaller set. It has three outcomes in it, and therefore I have to assign the probability one over three to each of them, okay? So that is conditional probability. Right, so conditional probability gives us an update on the probability of an event in light of new information. So this we call, as opposed to priors, this we call posterior probability, okay? So the, the value you assign as a probability to an event after you have a certain piece of information. This we call the posterior probability. And this is the notation we use the probability of event A conditioned on the occurrence of event B, okay? So it's simply we, we read this as probability of A given B, okay? Now if you remember this, what we did was actually uh, the probability of outcome three was based on our assumption one over six. Okay, one over six. But we updated this by dividing this to the probability of this event O. Okay, you see the probability of event O is one over two because it has three outcomes in it. Three by six is one half. Therefore, you see what I obtain is one over three. Okay, so I'm sort of normalizing my prob probability by the probability of the updated sample space because this here becomes my new sample space. Similarly, in this definition, you see uh, the probability A given B, okay, is defined as the probability of the intersection divided by, this is the normalization part, divided by the probability of this event here, this condition, okay? Or let's say the updated sample space, the probability of the updated sample space in the original universe, okay? So this essentially is a normalization. Now you see here, this is a ratio, and of course the probability of B occasionally may be zero, so to avoid division by zero, right, we sometimes write this in this product form. The definition of conditional probability is given here. Um, the probability of the intersection, A intersection with B, is equal to probability of A given B times probability of B, okay? So you should be careful about conditioning on events that are, that have zero probability, okay? Let's see another example here. 